Thank you for checking out Lakehead International's videos. You're about to watch one of our Lakehead International live webinars, a fun and informative way to learn more about Lakehead while also meeting faculty, staff, and current students. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please comment below. Otherwise, let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to another Lakehead International Live. My name is Jordan Ball, I'll be your host today. I'm really excited to be sharing more details about careers, co-op employment here at Lakehead University. In just a moment here, we're gonna be joined by our special guest, Caitlin Reeves, who is the Employer Relations and Co-op Advisor here at Lakehead University Thunder Bay. So what are we gonna to cover today? Uh, first, I'll ask you to chat about upcoming events, just so you get an idea of uh, what to anticipate over the next few weeks uh, here in Lakehead International in terms of events that you may wish to participate in. And then I'll chat a bit about employment in Canada. Um, and that's, of course, going to be chatting about working while you study, working after you graduate, all that sort of stuff. And then, of course, I'll pass the reins over to our guest uh, to share more details about the career zone, the multi-purpose space, networking opportunities and programs, events and workshops, and then, of course, cooperative education, which is uh, one of our favorite opportunities here at Lakehead. So I'll kick things off with chatting a bit about Employment in Canada, and then we'll introduce our special guest uh, as we pass it over, and, and she shares more about uh, plenty of things offered here at Lakehead in terms of career supports. So in terms of that employment uh, in Canada, I'm sure many of you are excited to learn and hear that during your studies, um, full-time international students are eligible uh, to work in Canada while they're studying. So those are post-secondary programs, of course, which is what we offer here at Lakehead University. Whether you're pursuing a bachelor's degree, master's, or a doctoral program, uh, you are certainly eligible to work while you're in Canada. International students are typically eligible to work both on and off campus jobs at Lakehead University. Uh, I will note, of course, a variety of different departments uh, and roles are available to students and provide a convenient and exciting work environment right here on our campuses. Um, so whether it's working with our team here in Lakehead International, perhaps it's uh, working with the career services team uh, in, in one of their student roles or Maybe it's even in our food services department and helping uh, run those operations. There's a wide range of roles and plenty of opportunities, which is exciting. Um, beyond our campuses, though, and if you're eligible to work off campus, uh, there's plenty of jobs in our community that are always looking for uh, new hires and part-time employees. So you will have no problem finding a job when you arrive here in our hometowns. Um, we simply like to remind you that it's important that you put your effort in, of course, when looking for those jobs. Uh, we have our online exclusive job bank, which I know Caitlin will share more about uh, shortly here. But uh, with that being said, we all, always expect our, our students to also be um, hitting the ground running, essentially, and we want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. You're going to different businesses with your resumes and your applications, and you're making sure you're seen and heard and your, your resumes in as many hands as possible. Um, and those students that really have that drive to get employment right when they arrive uh, certainly find it fairly quickly. Um, of course, with that being said, uh, it's always worth noting that having a part-time job while you're studying in Canada is not only an opportunity to earn money uh, that you can put towards your study, it also will help you gain really valuable Canadian work experience. So it's going to enhance your resume for when you graduate. So certainly employers upon graduation will be looking for that Canadian work experience to ensure that you know the, the employment norms here in Canada and you understand how our uh, job structures work to an extent. Of course, uh, after graduation though, uh, many of you are gonna be excited to learn that we also have a postgraduate work permit where international students are eligible actually to apply to stay in Canada and work as a postgraduate work permit program for up to three years after graduating. Um, that will help you secure full-time employment, contract employment, um, and then perhaps down the road, you may be looking to apply for PR or permanent residency. And another exciting note here is that Canadian, uh, the Canadian government recognizes your Canadian university degree from Lakehead University um, as a bonus, essentially. So you'll receive extra points when applying for that PR uh, because you've actually studied in a Canadian university institution. So that's really exciting for those students that have you know, the next five, six, seven plus years planned out and they intend on moving uh, to Canada and, and setting up uh, their life here. We're excited to welcome you, of course, and we're certainly happy to be a part of your journey. Um, but there's so many years between now and then, and, and that's exactly what we're here to chat about today in terms of how we can support you in terms of uh, 
uh, finding those opportunities to gain experience and, and earn some money. So this is my opportunity to pass over to Caitlin Reeves. I'll, I'll let her introduce herself and then uh, she'll dive right into it and, and essentially introduce the Career Zone, um, chatting a bit about what it offers. The next slide, we'll chat a bit about uh, our multi-purpose space on there, really, at campus. And then from there, of course, like I said before, we're going to dive into um, events, workshops, networking opportunities here on campus. And then, of course, towards the end of our webinar, we have plenty of slides dedicated to our co-op program. So pass it over to Caitlin. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so my name is Caitlin. I'm the co-op advisor uh, for Lakehead University. So I am located on the Thunder Bay campus, but in my position, I uh, service all campuses and all programs that have a co-op option. Um, and I work with a lovely team. There's a small team here at Thunder Bay, and then there is a small team located at the Aurelia campus as well. Um, we have myself, of course, our careers coordinator here on campus, and then we also have an officer um, which does specialty programming for students. And then, as Jordan mentioned, we also have some student staff that work for us. Uh, so we regular, regularly hire a few students um, over the school year to work for us part time. Um, and then over the summer, we have a, full, a few full time positions as well. Um, so here, what you see on the screen is our career zone um, office that is on the Thunder Bay campus. So um, this office is open normally Monday through Friday uh, for the afternoons, one to four. And you can just drop in if you have any questions around um, career services co-op. Um, so if you're wondering how to do your resume, if you're wondering um, if you have an interview coming up and you're looking for some tips and tricks on how to uh, navigate that interview, we're here to help you out. So it's, we do, um, you can just drop in and ask us questions, but then we do offer programming in this space as well, different uh, workshops. We host employers that come to campus and want to meet students. And then we, of course, we do very large events here on campus that uh, don't fit inside this space um, that will normally be in the Agora in the main space. We host large career fairs uh, throughout the school year um, as well. And then um, if you want to flip to the next, Next slide. Uh, this is a snapshot of um, our space in Aurelia. So we actually are going through a bit of a space changes in Aurelia, but is it is exciting for us because it looks like we're going to get a, a larger space eventually there. But um, on the Aurelia campus, my director and then coworker Joe is. Uh, located there and they offer the pretty much the exact same services as we do here on Thunder Bay campus. I will say our services vary just a slightly bit differently in hours um, and sometimes the different workshops, but that's because we tailor them to what the students on those campuses are asking from us. So also if you need help or see something that uh, maybe we're not offering you would like us to see, we are very open to, to feedback and well, as you know, careers is an ever-changing environment, so we, we like to keep up with what's going on and what's trending. So, alrighty. So, as I mentioned, we have networking and programming opportunities. Um, so, one of our most popular ones is we do just host um, an open house at the start of the year, which I believe this picture is... Um, is from one of our open houses where we just invite everyone to come out and see what kind of services we offer, see what we have coming up for the year. Um, and then we also offer those have those employers that come in. Um, so they come in throughout the year. Um, normally when they do come into our space, uh, they are looking to talk to students as they have jobs that they are looking to fill um, and they'll kind of set up inside this space. And whenever we have those employers on campus, we are sending out notifications to students. We're very active on social media, um, letting students know that uh, what's going on in our space. Um, and then for programs and workshops. Um, again, we tailor them on campus depending what students are asking for. But um, myself, um, every term I do a job searching and resume workshop. 
Um, and that's usually around the start of the term as, as that's when we're kind of getting ready. And then a few weeks after that, I also do an interview workshop, um, which is very interactive. You get lots of practice on those standard questions that um, employers are asking you and maybe some of those new trickier questions that employers are asking during um, interviews. So. As, as you'll learn, I'm a very open, um, approachable individual. So like I said, you can come and meet us in this space uh, anytime that we're open. Uh, yeah, then I'll jump time. in here, actually. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll mention, I mean, this photo is a good representation of, of the hustle and bustle that surrounds our career activities here on the Thunder Bay campus is where I've gotten to experience it. But I know um, from our colleagues in Aurelia, they share a similar experience where anything to do with careers and, and, and employment opportunities on campus is certainly well received by our students, but also uh, supported by our faculty and staff too. So going above and beyond uh, Caitlin's team and, and the career services and co-op team, um, we also have faculty that are always looking out for students and, and trying to find and, and serve employment opportunities. So whether or not it's uh, a, perhaps one of your professors in one of your favorite courses uh, who happens to know an industry leader that's looking for, um, I'll use myself as an example. I was in business here at Lakehead for four years and oftentimes in my marketing classes, uh, my professors would have connections to uh, industry leaders within in our local market and beyond that, that we're looking for student workers in the summer or summer employment opportunities, perhaps even part-time employment. Um, so I think that going above and beyond this space, it's also important for our students to know coming in, um, your faculty and your staff are, are also looking out for you and uh, being able to just voice your own concerns. I, I don't even like using the word concern because you're really advocating for yourself to say, hey, um, I'm looking for a job this summer. If you, if you hear of anything, please consider me. Having that quick touch point with uh, somebody who has been supporting you in your Lakehead journey uh, could make the difference of you getting a job that is outstanding in, in our eyes. Um, shifting gears here, I'll pass it back to Caitlin. I know she briefly touched on some of the events and workshops that we host, and this is actually a photo from uh, one of our um, career fair days. But Caitlin, I'll, I know that we've uh, rejigged them essentially to help students prepare over a multi-day period. So I'll let you sort of walk us through what can students anticipate when they first arrive at a career event. Yeah, so like I said, we are often like tweaking events and changing them a little bit to um, match the ever-changing career atmosphere that's around us and, and for what students want. So um, the first career fair that um, is hosted in the fall term, we actually just started last year as a part-time career fair. So if you um, are just getting here and wanting to get that part-time job, um, it's a great place. We um, invite about... Uh, about 40 employers to campus who all have a variety of position openings. Um, we focus on bringing a variety of employers on campus too. So you might find some um, employers that are even on campus, um, some that we try and get um, ones that are close to campus or at least easy to get to on the bus routes as well. Um, so part-time fair is our first one of the year. And then we do do a few that are programs, um, that target programs, so our engineering career fair. Um, as a career fair, they're, they're solely for engineering students. We have um, local and um, employers from across Canada that come out and look to talk to our engineering students. Um, some of those employers, or I should, it should say a good portion of those employers, do have opportunities opportunities and vacancies that they're looking to fill at that moment. Um, some of them are just looking to talk to students and they're thinking about as you approach a graduation, um, what your resume will look like and um, where you're going to want to move and stay. So they're wanting to have those conversations with you. Another one is our education fair. So that is targeting um, our students in education and um, what they'll be looking for upon graduation. And then as you approach graduation, we have another career fair that happens near the end, and that will focus um, on students that are graduating. And then it does have employers that come um, simply looking for students who are looking for that uh, full-time um, work over the summer. Um, so um, 
what also came up over this past year, um, leading up to those career fairs, we do do quite large events uh, in this Agora space to help students prepare for those events. So we focus on resume writing, interviewing, and networking skills. Um, networking uh, in in Thunder Bay and really in Canada is, is a very important skill um, to learn and sharpen. It's it can make a big difference um, as you approach graduation in, in finding that career. Um, so we've found that over the last few years and we've really um, um, brought networking skills to, to light and we have a few events that lead up to these career fairs to help you with networking. Um, next slide. Caitlin, I was gonna ask um, today, or, or pardon me, this past, uh, uh, winter semester in March, we hosted the career fair that was geared towards graduating students and students looking for summer employment. Day one, um, what was the name of that event? That was, was it the job market event? Um, yeah, the job so market. That was really um, exciting to see because as a as a staff member here at Lakehead, I get to participate and attend these events. And, and most times I'm, I'm doing something related to social media or or perhaps I'm, I'm taking photos and videos at these events. Um, but it was really great to see all the students that got to come out and, and prepare for the big day. The The following two days is when um, I believe each day had almost over 40, if not more, employers on campus. Um, and so in preparation to be able to, on the spot, be able to talk to an employer about your skills, your experience, and why you might be a good fit for their organization and vice versa, uh, having that 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 strong, confident conversation that doesn't necessarily start from square one. There, there's an opportunity to practice those skills. So that job market was really exciting to see. Um, we even had some of our executive uh, team here at Lakehead participate at that uh, event in terms of they sat down and they helped students with mock interviews or, or they helped them with their elevator pitches. Um, Caitlin, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to define an elevator pitch because I know that if I try, I'll probably goof it up a bit. So um, for those students that are unfamiliar with what that is, uh, could you help us understand it a bit more? Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty much selling yourself in under two minutes. So it's called an elevator pitch because you think of you're walking into elevator and you just happen to meet that CEO or executive that you would love to work for. And before you get to the next floor, you got to sell yourself to that individual. So it's, um, and I like to remind students, it's not just listing off your resume too. It's you want to sell your personality, um, your soft skills as well, which are very important. Um, so refining your elevator pitch um, can make a big difference. And that's something we can help with. So um, yeah, that's elevator two minutes. Uh about your talking about yourself, not just listing off your resume. I was going to say that your might be a little boring to to hear the the bullet points of a resume. I think, oh gosh, I, I would not want to list my resume. But like you said, being able to sell your personality, a lot of uh, people in hiring know that they are not necessarily hiring a piece of paper that lists your credentials. They're hiring a personality, somebody that needs to jive with the office, needs to fit in the team really well. Um, and those soft skills are something that uh, Lakehead will help you develop in a wide range of opportunities. So, I mean, today our focus is careers, co-op and employment, but uh, I'll always take the opportunity to touch on student life here at Lakehead is a great way to build those soft skills. Being able to have casual conversations that are appropriate in a uh, careers context um, will, will be facilitated through uh, programming like our uh, Global Ambassador Program, for example, or some of our other leadership and development programs. Uh, those are just a few to name, but um, I will encourage viewers, if you'd like to learn more about all that sort of stuff, we certainly had a webinar uh, a few weeks ago, um, and that's Student Life uh, at Lakehead. So you can check that out on our YouTube. I'll pass it back to Caitlin, though, because we have um, a very important topic to talk about, and that's cooperative education. This is a big one for many students. They're excited to learn more about it. I, I see Caitlin's excited to share more. <laughs> this is her specialty. So Caitlin, I'll pass it over to you to, to kick things off and share more um, at a high level. And then we have some slides to dive a bit deeper into what programs are offered uh, within co-op and then also the the, the co-op schedule, essentially, and where they might fit terms within their, their three, two, four-year journey here at Lakehead. Yeah, so thank you. Um, so co-op, that's, that's my jam. That's what I live and breathe every day is the cooperative education program. Um, 
So like I said, I oversee the program for both campuses. I am here in person in Thunder Bay, um, and I am your go-to person if you have any questions around co-op. And if I can't answer your question, I will find the answer, or I will, um, in some cases, direct you to faculty too, because they are um, great experts when it comes to faculty in the fields. Um, so um, co-op up here, or sorry, if you want to go to the next slide. So we just have some quick stats here. So depending on the program that you are in, um, you may do um, four to six terms. Um, this now, if you want to get your co-op designation, depending on the program that you're in, you're going to either complete 12 to 16 um, months, sorry, um, and that gets you your co-op designation. With that being said, um, if you're going along your journey and you realize your co-op de co designation um, is not something you want to strive for at this moment, but you do want that experience, we can discuss a path that uh, will look will work best for you. Um, on here on this slide, we also have the stat for the um, average hour, hour paid hours. And I actually just redid this math um, yesterday as I was re reviewing these slides and this amount has gone up. So that's very exciting. Um, I had some students um, over the past few terms um, really impress some employers and they've been offered, been able to offer um, students more money. So our, our average student right now makes uh, between $23 to $24 an hour, um, which is super exciting. Um, if you would like to see those stats according to the program that you're going into, um, I publish them each year on the co-op website. Um, so, um, I very much believe in transparency, um, and that can help you navigate negotiations with employers as you approach um, um, contract negotiations with co-op employers um, and and just help you along that journey. So if you would like to see a more defined um, wage, you can check that out on the co-op website. Um, so yeah, you can just press enter. I believe there's more pop-ups to come on this slide. Aha, there we go. So here's now with co-op, as co-op is an optional program here at Lakehead, we do not match you with an employer. Um, our program gives you the option to go out and um, work for almost any employer related to your field. I say almost any because they have to be um, a registered Canadian company. They have to have a Canadian um, office here. So there is some limits. Um, but with that being said, we it really um, um, opens up the opportunities for students here. So up on the screen are a few of the employers that um, over the past few years have employed students. Um, and some of these um, actually students are currently working for some of these companies right now as well, just starting new contracts or just finishing them up. Um, as you move along the co-op program, there is a co-op job board that you get access to once you're accepted into the program. Um, and that particular job board um, hosts jobs that from employers that are particularly looking to hire Lakehead students. So lots of these students that are currently employed by um, lots of the employers you hear on the screen, students do a great job. They come back to me and they want, they say, I want another Lakehead student. Uh, the past one left such a lasting impression. I want another Lakehead student. So we're so lucky to um, have those great students already out there making a great impression um, and coming back. So I um, manage this job board um, to make sure that you are the first ones to see those jobs um, as co-op students. But with that being said, you can look outside. I am not a engineering expert, um, <laughs> although sometimes I like to think I may be coming one with all these great conversations with students, but I know I'm not an engineering expert. I don't know every single company in the world, um, so I am open to those discussions. If um, there's a new business coming up that you'd like to work for, I know in the computer science realm, there's always startups coming up, um, so I'm always open to navigating and looking into those opportunities for you. Um, so it's very exciting. Um, if you want to jump to the next slide, perfect. So here's a quick overview of all of our undergrad co-op 
programs. Um, now, I should say, um, depending on the program that you're in, um, the requirements to enter the co-op program may be different. Um, so you do have to hit a minimum grade requirement and that does change according to program. Um, that is posted on the co-op webpage. Um, and then also according to when you go out and start your co-op um, may differ depending on your program. So for example, computer science, um, the first standard term that you go out and start your co-op is winter of third year. Um, but um, if we want to switch and talk about engineering, the first time that you will likely enter your co-op program is summer of your third year. And now lots of students like to ask, why third year? Um, and that's because you have the skills from the classroom um, that the employers are looking for at that time. Um, in some in some um, times, we can have you enter the co-op program earlier, but we want to see that you maybe have previous experience in that work field, um, just so we know you're going out into that uh, workspace with the knowledge that you have. Um, so if if you ever have questions about that, navigating that, um, you can come to me, drop by the career zone, we'll help you out. But um, so the most important thing I like to say in the first, first and second year of your studies, focus on getting those good grades um, so you have no issues entering the co-op program. Um, and if for any reason you're worried about grades, come see me. Let's strategize. Um, I can maybe introduce you to some of other resources that you haven't um, learned about yet that can help you uh, reach those goals that you want. Um, so, and I sh should say, um, uh, out of this list, um, Eng our engineering co-op program is very popular. Um, we have a number of students go through it each year and also computer science as well. Um, so keeping that in mind, um, when you're entering that program, you are competing against your classmates for these jobs essentially. So come out, do the work. Um, it's the students that engage and come out to the workshops are really the ones that see the results. Um, and it's so rewarding. Um, next slide. Alrighty, so here we have listed is our um, graduate uh, programs that have a co-op option. Um, now for all of these, you do have to complete uh, two terms or eight months to get your um, co-op designation. Now, if you only do one term or four months, that's okay as well. If that works best into your um, education plan, um, we can work with that as well. I will say though, most employers are looking to hire students for at least those eight months. Um, four months is so short, you're really just training with the company. They want you to get in and really integrate yourself into the company. Um, so when you are job searching, you will see most contracts start at eight months. Um, now I will say there is, if you only accept a four month contract at first with employer, and this goes for for all students, um, that's okay. You can take the next four months with a different employer. Um, and maybe that's what fits best with your strategy. Maybe you're a computer science student and you're, you know, computer science is so vast. Maybe you want to test working with one, with a small company your first term, and maybe the second term you want to go out and work for a large government agency um, and just see what those different offices are like and teams are like in working environments because this is your time to also experiment um, and see where you like working. So take advantage of that. Um, so yeah, um, and yeah, perfect. Next slide. <laughs> um, so when can you go off to co-op? Like I mentioned before, it's going to depend a little bit for undergrads. Um, summer after second year or summer after third year, it might be um, your winter term, depending on your program. Um, there is information year round on the website about this. There's a beautiful chart um, that I have published on there because it can be a little confusing. And then for your graduate students, it's your summer of your first year that you'll first be going out. Um, and if you ever have questions about how to navigate this, 
um, come see me, shoot me an email. Um, I'm happy to help because your path may look very different if you have a friend's path even in the in the same program. Your your path may look totally different. Um, so I'll help you navigate that. Um, next slide. Oh, here's the beautiful chart I was talking about. Um, so this just gives you a snapshot of depending on what program you're in, when you could can go out. Um, and like I said, those optional terms. So you'll see under business, um, kinesiology, and uh, engineering, we have that optional in brackets on the first term. That first term, summer of second year, we're looking for you to have a little bit of previous work experience um, in the field to take on that term because you're, you may not have the skills from the classroom, but after that third year, you will have those skills that the employers are looking for. Um, and, and when I say skills, I'm talking technical skills too. You have those technical skills that those employers are looking for. Um, not to say that soft skills are also just important, but um, um, employers are looking for those technical skills for you to have at that time. Um, yeah, and so like I said, this exact chart is published on the co-op website year round. So um, I know I check it regularly, so you can always check that on your own time as well. For sure. Uh, and it's worth noting, Caitlin, of course, for, for viewers today, your, I guess, if you're joining us this September, um, the, the soonest that your co-op could begin is uh, one year from today, essentially, in, in May 2025. Um, so it's always good to check back and, and stay up to date with Caitlin and, and the Career Services and Co-op team to make sure that any of those regulations or, or term sequences in this case um, are what you remember them to be. So although you're watching it now, getting excited for your co-op, it's always important to be aware of the events and workshops that are happening um, throughout your entire degree here at Lakehead to make sure that if there's any information sessions where you can just fine tune your knowledge around the program being offered, um, it's important to participate in those and, and support those uh, workshops because that's what's going to give you the information that you need at that very moment, hopefully. Um, so I think it's it's time to shift gears here into everyone's favorite part of the webinar, and that's the Q&A. Um, we've had plenty of questions already roll through in terms of uh, career services and co-op specific. So I'll dive into a couple within the Q&A that I've marked to answer live. I might get Caitlin to, to jump in and, and help me answer some of these. Uh, Caitlin, you're more than welcome to also mark some for yourself if you would like. But the first question uh, is, what is the probability of getting on-campus job as a student in Master's of Science in Computer Science program? So, I mean, I, I can speak from uh, maybe my own experience working with students who are from computer science. Um, if you're looking for a job that's going to be in your field, uh, the opportunities I'll, I'll be transparent or limited in terms of computer science jobs on campus. Um, employment on campus, so, so if you're just looking to earn some money while you're studying, certainly plentiful. Um, and like I said earlier in today's presentation, they could be in it with a wide range of different departments on campus. It could be um, I'm one of the marketing assistants in our in our department, like at International, it could be in the career zone, it could be in Student Central, graduate studies, or we also have plenty of food services on campus. That's oftentimes where we see a lot of uh, students getting part-time jobs, helping support those operations. We have a Starbucks on the Thunder Bay campus, um, and we have a, a few different food vendors uh, uh, here in Thunder Bay, but also in Aurelia that, uh, like I said, looking to hire students and then support uh, their own uh, financing of education. Uh, going into a different question, this one says, uh, I got enrolled to the course space. Is there any chance that I can transfer the co to the co-op after joining the university? So uh, assuming I don't know what the course based is in this case, what program, um, provided that there is a co-op option for the course space, you're more than welcome to still pursue that option. Oftentimes students will apply from the very beginning, day one that they apply to Lake and they, they include that co-op option. And in other cases, students realize and, and don't even know that co-op is an op option until they learn about it through one of the workshops or events on campus. And so at that point, they actually will say, hey, I just learned about co-op. I want to pursue this. And so then it's a conversation with with Caitlin and the career, career services and co-op team and then perhaps a faculty member. So maybe it's your supervisor or your chair to ensure that you have the, the eligibility to apply and pursue that opportunity. 
Um, another uh, question here is, are there part-time job opportunities for someone doing a bachelor's of science in nursing? Absolutely. Um, so, and in, in, again, in my experience working with international students, uh, oftentimes students that are in nursing will find part-time jobs in the healthcare setting, which uh, range quite widely in terms of, of where you may work. So perhaps it could be uh, being a support worker in the hospital setting here in Thunder Bay. Perhaps it's working in a long-term care facility or, uh, I mean, the more casual name is an old folks home here in Canada. Um, so that's certainly an option. And those are skills that uh, will help you build on the foundational knowledge you're learning in nursing um, and, and certainly then help you excel, hopefully, within the program and be prepared to be a strong candidate for any one of our nursing jobs here in Canada upon graduation as a career field in general, nurses are in high demand. So uh, we don't have too much concern around you getting hired after you graduate from Lakehead's nursing program. It's it's well respected and renowned here uh, in Canada. But with that being said, it doesn't hurt to always get that uh, experience in terms of employment related to your field of study. This next question says, should I include cooperative education in my visa application? So to all students that um, have applied to a co-op program from the very beginning, if there is a co-op program mentioned in your letter of acceptance from Lakehead University, we certainly encourage you to apply at that time. It will all be one application. Your immigration officer will assess your, your uh, study permit to Canada based on you joining a program, and the co-op will just be a factor of then at the same time providing you with a co-op work permit when it's appropriate. I do want to remind viewers, though, of course, we do have our international student services team who are always happy to support um, new applications for co-op work terms. So if, if you're one of those students that joined Lakehead uh, a few years ago or, or after a couple of years, then you hear about this co-op experience or, or that's when it hits you, hey, this is something I want to do. We ourselves will also run workshops uh, to help support new applications to co-op work terms. And we'll make sure that you have all the right documents and, and, and we'll guide you through the entire process. So whether or not you apply uh, from the beginning or in the middle of your Lakehead degree, um, either works for us. We do encourage though at the beginning, if it's listed on your letter of acceptance, it, it won't hurt to include it as a part of your application. Um, this question says, I was offered master's of master's in computer science course-based program. Do I have an option to shift to the call program further? Any information uh, on this would be helpful. Caitlin, I know you marked that one to answer live, so I'll pass it over to you. Yeah, so, and I saw another, um, uh, someone else ask a similar question as well. Um, I did throw in there uh, a link to our eligibility chart. Um, so if you're I'm particularly talking about um, Masters of Computer Science. So if you originally enroll in the course space, um, to be able to do co-op, you will have to switch into thesis or project base, but you can do that um, after you arrive here. Um, I do recommend doing it sooner rather than later, um, but uh, it, that switch can be done later. But so for Masters of Computer Science, you must be thesis or course based. Um, there is a chart that outlines that according to program on the website. Um, I can throw that in the chat as well. Um, but yeah, you can do that switch later. And I encourage you, if you're thinking about switching, you're not sure, to come talk to me, um, book an appointment, and we'll talk through uh, what works best for you. So yeah. Thanks, Caitlin. I'll jump in here and I'll add to that. In terms of switching programs, um, I've had the pleasure to work with a number of faculty and, and grad coordinators. If you are in a course-based program um, and you're looking to pursue a project-based, a portfolio-based, or a thesis-based where you'll require a supervisor, um, the best thing that we recommend is that once you arrive on campus, um, complete a full semester of courses, so you, perhaps your fall semester in this case, um, and that will give you an opportunity to start making important connections and, and determining um, what faculty members you would pursue in terms of working with and having them support your own studies. Um, at that point, they'll get to know you, your work ethic, um, and, and perhaps then be able to extend an offer to support your thesis, your project, whatever that might look like. And with that being said, um, at that point, you can always have ongoing conversations with Caitlin at the same time. So if, if you're pursuing that route with the intentions down the road to then perhaps 
pursue a co-op. You can have conversations with multiple people at the same time. That doesn't hurt. Um, and they'll give you similar advice in terms of what are your next steps or what is the path forward to pursue that opportunity. We have some really great questions about uh, IRCC and, and the portals and whatnot. So the first one says, IRCC required a proof of the cooperative education for my master's of computer science. How can I provide a proof in my application portal? So like I said, your co-op uh, co opportunity will be actually noted on your letter of acceptance if that's a part of the uh, program you've applied for. So if it's not noted on your letter of acceptance, um, that me that's fine. I would encourage you to continue proceeding with an application for your Canadian study permit. Um, and then using your current letter of acceptance. And so once you actually arrive here in uh, at Lakehead, at that point, then we can help uh, support you to apply for a co-op work permit within our international student services team. If it's just a matter of uh, making that quick switch on the portal to make sure that our admissions team are aware that you would like a co-op program. So, I mean, I, I am referencing undergrad students. It's a bit easier for an undergrad student to switch into a co-op program because it's a, it's a matter of changing the program name in your application. Whereas, uh, like Caitlin mentioned, grad programs typically co-op are, are offered for specific routes. So it, it may only be offered for the thesis option or it may only be offered for the course option. So that's something that's a little more uh, complicated. And that's why we would discourage you to try and switch at this point, because it would mean your application would have to be reassessed by our grad studies team and then your department. Um, the second question about IRCC is, which portal of the IRCC is fast in processing the Canadian visa? I've, I've observed that they have an old and new portal. So you are correct that IRCC does have two portals. Um, the, the difference between those portals is actually only at the beginning stage. So it's, it's, it's how you sign up for that portal. Um, either one works and both of them are treated equally in the eyes of IRCC. So whether you choose to use the old one or the new one, whichever one works best for you, of course, I would encourage you to do that. Either way, um, IRCC will treat your application uh, fairly and equitably across the board between anyone who uses the two different applications. Um, with that being said, there are different types of visas that you could be applying for. So there is something called the Student Direct Stream or SDS. That uh, stream is only available to students in, uh, joining us from select countries. I don't have the list off the top of my head. Um, that one certainly is uh, processed a bit quicker. So next I'll pass it over to uh, Caitlin to answer some questions. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to mention, because um, I cause we're answering a lot of questions about how to apply and the, and the co-op visas, and it can get very confusing. Um, but I just want to also confirm, although you're accepted into a co-op, um, into a program with co-op, um, or you go into the co-op stream, you once you are here in Canada and in the midst of your studies, you still need to um, apply, apply into the co-op program with your intent to start, um, which can be a little bit confusing, um, but I hope you, well, maybe I don't hope, but you will likely get a lot of emails from me and see social media blasts from me of reminders of these important dates. So once you're here in Canada, whether you or accepted into a program with that co-op stream or not, you still need to um, apply into the program with your intent of when to start. Um, and these dates can be important because say if you intend to go out summer after your third year, you actually have to apply with your intent to start that summer um, well before in the fall when you're actually just starting um, your orientation for that uh, third year. Um, which is likely not type, top of mind at that time, but you apply with that intent so far before um, because we get a lot of applications, we go through those applications, and then prior to you going out and doing that work, we need to give you enough time to job search, attend the workshops to learn those important skills. Um, there's a co-op prep course to complete before you go off. Um, so that's why we work so far in advance for those um, times. So I did throw a link in the chat with um, uh, a link to our webpage on how to apply, uh, which includes, um, there's a link there to the chart and the eligibility requirements, but also states those very important dates to apply. Um, so 
So just to note, if you are planning to go out in the summer, you actually have to apply with your intent to go out in the fall. If you're intending to go out um, in the winter months, you're actually applying in the late summer months to go out. And that's just so I ensure that we can set you up with all of those skills prior to your job searching phase for co-op. Um, so I will also, um, we will become quick friends if you come to me well in advance of all of these dates too. I love if you're coming first year, just getting to campus, come see me. We can set out all your dates in advance to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, I love when students come in advance. Um, I'll still help you out if you come a little bit later, but it works well better for everyone if you come chat with me in, um, in advance. So you do, you will see my face along with my team members out um, in orientation in those fall, mar fall months, out and about at all of the events, I'm looking to talk to you and answer those questions and set you up for success in the co-op program or setting you up in success for finding that part-time job. Um, or even job as you approach your graduation. It's never too early to think about that, to start preparing of where you want to be when you graduate. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I'll throw it back to you, Jordan. Thank you. Um, so the next question we have is from a student who is enrolled in environmental engineering course based, and they're ready to begin their studies this fall 2024. So we're excited to have you join us in just a few months here. Uh, they have their student visa, so that's really great news. And they would like to learn more about part-time jobs and whether or not there's a co-op option, co option for them. So within the environmental engineering program course space at the master's level, there is a co-op available. Uh, so that's something, like Caitlin said, if you're going to be that shining star, you should probably be uh, popping into our office, setting up an appointment, or keeping an eye on your email in those first few weeks of arriving at Lakehead even. Um, if not the first few months of your, your Lakehead journey, uh, so that you can begin that application and, and apply for the intent to participate in co-op within environmental engineering. Uh, in terms of your, your first question there, in terms of finding a part-time job, similarly, when you first arrive here in, in Canada, you can st certainly start accessing the resources within the career zone and, and uh, career services to learn more about how to find a part-time job, how to update your resume so that it's an appropriate in the Canadian employer context. Um, and then of course, we'll also help you with things like uh, interview preparation and perhaps those elevator pitches. I will add, of course, that uh, you will not be able to start working in Canada until your program actually starts. So if you join us in the middle of August and you have a couple weeks to settle in, you're more than welcome to pop into campus and start meeting uh, our friendly faces in our in our student services team. So joining us in the career zone um, in the middle of August to start preparing for that part-time job search you certainly can do that. You can even start applying at that point. However, you should note, and I do wanna make it clear that you won't be able to start working until your, your program actually starts at the beginning of September. There's one other question I had marked already, and it said, after applying for the Canadian visa, what next? Well, that's, that's a broad question. There's a lot of answers I could go on probably for the next hour about what to do next. I won't bore you with all that necessarily because um, what I would say is the next stage for you, if you've already applied for a Canadian visa, be a diligent applicant and, and keep an eye on that Lakehead email. That is the email that we will communicate important updates to, uh, whether it's updates to your application, whether it's updates to your next steps in preparing to join us here in Canada. As our team here in International Enrollment uh, continues to communicate with you over the next few weeks and months, um, we have some really exciting opportunities for you to participate and share your excitement to join us here at Lakehead. But then, like I said, we will pass the torch over to our orientation and transition committee. And, and that includes our in, international student services team who will help transition over the June, July and August so that as you prepare to fly to Canada, pick up everything you own and, and move your life here for uh, a Canadian degree, um, they are going to provide you really incredible resources uh, that will help you make that a smooth transition, hopefully. Um, so I hope that helps answer the question. Um, by not really answering it, to be blunt, uh, I can acknowledge that, but that's because it's there's so much to do over the next uh, few months as you prepare for your journey. 
Um, and like I said, I would be here for another hour if I if I went through every detail that we would remind you of and you would probably forget. So that's why it's always important as an applicant to be uh, engaged and checking that Lakehead email on a regular basis. So I will note, I mean, we have one more open question. Caitlin, I don't know if you answered this one um, at the top there. So I'll pass it over to you perhaps. And if you have already answered it, let me know. Ah. Uh... Alrighty, um, for thesis-based Bachelor of Computer Science, do I have to apply for a co-op work, work permit when I get my study permit or at the time I get my co-op? Um, so I do want to clarify this. We do want to get that co-op work permit um, sooner rather than later. Um, so apply for it as soon as you can. Um, that may not be till you get here to campus as maybe you change your mind and then you get to campus and you're like, wait, I do want to do co-op after we maybe have a discussion. I would um, uh, recommend applying for that as soon as possible because the wait time can be very long. Um, and also when you are job searching, it is nice to tell employers that I have everything set to go. I can start work as soon as possible. Um, I'm ready for my co-op. Um, so don't wait until you get your co-op job. Do it well in advance. Um, if you need help navigating that, um, come to me. I do work closely with the international office um, with those co-op work permits. So between the two of us, we'll make sure you're, you're set up for success with that. Um, so please do not wait until you have your co-op job. Do that as soon as possible. Um, and there's just one other question that popped in there um, for my location of my office. So like I said, I'm based on the Thunder Bay campus. If you're looking for me just dropping by, you can swing by the career zone. I am there quite often. Um, and if I'm not there, um, uh, it's usually my coworker, Oscar. Um, he's my student worker and his specialty is actually co-op. So if he can't answer your question, he will uh, set you up with an appointment with me um, so we can sit down and discuss. So you can book appointments with me through our My Success platform that can be in person or virtual. Um, so that's how I should mention, if you are in Aurelia, we will be meeting virtually for most of the time. Um, but in many cases, also the team in Aurelia can help you uh, if you prefer those in-person services. So um, Thunder Bay Career Zone is where you can usually find me, um, but you can always book an appointment with me through my success and that can be a virtual or in-person appointment. Uh, yeah, and- Thank you, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, this question is a good one. It says, how long will it take for Lakehead University to contact me after receiving my official documents directly from my previous school? Um, so this is in relation to our admissions processes. Uh, in terms of uh, reviewing your documents and actually noting them on your file, it can range. And of course, you can imagine um, when you send documents from your previous institution, if you're sending it by mail, it could take um, a few days. If you're doing priority mail that's registered, it could take a few weeks if you're doing um, the, the notorious snail mail, as we like to call it. Um, so there, there's always something to factor in in terms of how long it will actually take for the mail to physically arrive here in Thunder Bay at our admissions offices. Once it arrives, our admissions teams will do their best to process that document as soon as possible. Um, I will note, and I've seen quite a few questions come up, that our graduate studies team uh, is, is working as hard as they can right now to assess applications, review applications, um, and send out offers on a rolling basis. So they're sending out offers on a regular basis. So uh, with that being said, we know that there is a backlog in terms of uh, the number of applications that they still have to assess, and of course, documents that they need to review. So if, if you've just recently shared those documents or perhaps you've had them sent a while back and they still haven't been noted on your account, uh, don't fret, they will get to them. They, they have well kept records. And of course, if there's a document that needs to get eyes on it, they'll look at it at some point. Uh, their priority right now is of course, assessing those initial applications to proceed them onto the next stage of the application, which is their department review. So for any students that have shared official documents and are waiting to hear back, have patience with them. I know it's, you're anxious to hear back and excited to learn more. If it's in relation to uh, your letter of acceptance, if you have a conditional letter of acceptance, but you're hoping to hold off from applying for that study permit until you have an unconditional, um, what I would encourage any of those applicants to do is actually continue with your uh, study permit application using that conditional letter of acceptance. 
while you're in processing, you can use an IRCC web form to upload your unconditional LOA. So once we issue that, once we review those documents, make sure you meet those requirements, we are happy to that at that point, then issue an unconditional letter of acceptance and you can upload that and update your immigration officer. Processing times as of uh, last week, I haven't looked this week, we're at 14 weeks. Um, and so that's why we are encouraging students who would like to join us this September and fall uh, intake to start their application as soon as possible uh, so that they have enough time to, of course, then receive their study permit and, and then proceed to uh, travel to Canada and start their studies. Caitlin, I'll pass it over to you for the next one. Thank you. Um, so I just had a question that uh, says I applied for Master's of Science in Chemical Engineering. Um, is it possible for me to apply for co-op? Um, if not, are there work experience options for me? So very exciting. Um, in the most, in the recent years, they have at, added Master's of Chemical Engineering to the co-op program. So yes, there is a co-op option for you. Um, what you can do to prepare for that in in um, in this moment and and for everyone, if you're thinking of doing a co-op um, to prepare, is research research some companies that you think you would like to work for. Um, and I should mention you can work anywhere in Canada too. So is there? Um, I do know I have a chemical engineer right now working for a large company in Saskatchewan. So is is moving an option for you? Do you want to explore other places in Canada, um, or do you want to explore opportunities here in Thunder Bay or or down in Aurelia? So in preparation for co-op right now, start researching some companies you want to work for. Look into where they're located. What is uh, important to those companies? Um, so in preparation, just do some research right now. That's what I would recommend. But yes, chemical engineering has a co-op. A master's chemical and undergrad chemical engineering both have co-op options. Thank you so much for sharing more, Caitlin. Um, with that being said, folks, it looks like we've answered all the questions. Also, that time of the, the day in our webinar where we wrap things up and remind you once again to stay connected, follow us on our social media channels. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Lake Kid International. Those are where we are located. Um, if you would like to explore our campuses and facilities so you can check out um, some of the spaces we talked about today even, but also you can look at residence, uh, the cafeterias, lecture halls, labs, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you can do it from the comfort of your own home, which is great. You don't have to fly all the way to Canada to explore or start your journey at Lakehead. Uh, head over to lakeheadu.ca forward slash tours to, to do that. And earlier on in today's webinar, I did mention a bit about live events that are upcoming. Uh, we do have a student panel this Thursday, May 2nd at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, that student panel is current Lakehead International students who are going to share and, and chat a bit more about their Lakehead journey. So it's going to be a big one. It's going to be exciting. It's, it's lots to learn and they'll hopefully have tons of questions from our audience. So I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, with that being said, though, I do want to say thank you again for joining us. If we were not able to answer your question today, um, or if perhaps I click end on today's webinar, and the question pops into your head immediately, that's usually how it works for me. It's like, oh, gosh, I didn't answer, ask that one question, and it just came to me. That's okay. You can find us uh, by sending us an email at welcome at lakehedu.ca, or like I said, our social media channels will answer direct messages, DMs, that sort of thing. So uh, you can find us online over there. Alrighty, I'll end it there. Thank you again to our special guest, Caitlin, and to behind the scenes team, Paula, for answering so many questions and supporting today's event. It was a pleasure to be your host, and hopefully we'll see you at the next event. Bye for now, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I want to encourage you to comment below or connect with us on social media. We can be found at Lakehead International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching once again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next live webinar. Bye for now.